Welcome to Game Retail Ramblings, everybody. I'm your host, Travis Severance. This is episode number 25. We're going to be talking about when to level up. So all about expansion and how you know when it's time to take a look at your store and maybe increase it or gobble up a space next to you in a in a another plaza or take a look at moving or maybe it's time for another store. It's been a bit. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, thanks for all the comments and the likes on the Gen Con content. I think we've got one or two more videos that we're looking at having come out in the next week or so. That's sort of just longer form interviews with some of the folks and some of the characters that are there with um, both Jenna Lee and Caleb, uh, who also went as well. So we'll take a look at that. That'll be a, that'll be a good time. That they should be a fun, fun insert episodes that are kind of freebies. Um, we're pushing towards a thousand subs. Um, we're getting pretty close, which is wild to me. I can remember back to 50 people or whatever, and it's crazy to me that there's 809 of you or whatever that are there, or maybe it's even more than that at this point. I'm not sure. Almost 900 is pretty good. So today we're going to talk about something that I hear and I see a lot of um, game retailers talk about. There's a whole bunch of conversation that happens around how to build a store, what to do to get yourself to that point, how to handle things financially, what you should look for in a location. There's an entire Facebook group that's just called How to Open a Tabletop Game Store, which I'm part of. And there's there's great conversation that happens in there. There's a couple of other content creators that share their work in there as well. If you're looking at opening a game store or if you have some questions about opening a game store, I would encourage you to check out that, that group on Facebook. Lloyd Brown runs the group. He's done uh, a handful of different uh, digital books and things like that in the game industry. So there's some really good information there. And generally speaking, the topics that come up have really good feedback from a nice mixture of A, people that are lurkers that are kind of just watching to see what's going on, and a handful of us from around the country that um, run stores themselves and we get invited into the group to have different conversations about other things and we chime in when it's appropriate. So today we're gonna to talk about how to expand. So when's the right time to expand? Whether you're thinking about increasing your store's size or opening a new location or even moving to a new spot altogether, these are things that I've done a couple of different times myself. Uh, so today we're gonna to break down the key indicators and the benefits and the challenges that sort of happen from from your decisions to decide to do that. And I think you gotta start with understanding the reasons to expand. So first things first, like why are you considering expanding in the first place, you know? And we had a couple of different reasons over the course of the last 14 or 15 years that I've owned this store. And even before when I was managing it, we, we had done some expansions internally, not anything external. But when I got together with my business partner, Rob, down the plaza from us, he owned the land center. And there was, a, there was a storefront in between the two of us, but we had a ton of customers that had a bunch of crossover. So when him and I got together and we decided we were gonna buy this business, we were in one location in the plaza and he was in another location in the plaza. And what we decided to do in the interest of sort of not having to deal with double the rent and getting everything under one roof is we consolidated things together. So there were portions of his land center that were probably a little bit more expansive than they needed to be. He had a really big, massive space with a whole ton of computers and stuff. And when we were looking at the numbers, the, all of the computers weren't in use. We still had to do all the maintenance and all the updates for all those computers, but it wasn't necessarily something that was doing a lot to build the revenue for his business. So we made the decision that his space was nicer and a fresher build out. The, the space that I was in before was sort of an old leftover from the previous owner who had been in there for like 10 years and the owner before that who had been in there for like five years. So. Rob's space was fresh and nice and he had just had a contractor go through and they made nice glass VIP rooms and there was new carpeting and different things like that. So we decided to pick up basically what Millennium was and combine it inside the space for Cyberstorm. Our, our next sort of steps along that way were sort of just figuring out the Jenga piece of how exactly that was going to work. He had a portion of the business that was just computers. I had all this product that I was coming in with. We had tournament space. So there was a there was an extra amount of space in the back that was basically a, a leftover warehouse space from the previous uh, tenant that was in there, which was a Dollar General. And we had taken some advice from our lawyer about how much space we should probably take. He said, take everything you can. We were like a little trepidatious about that. So we said, no, we're just gonna take this much. And you know, two months later, we were wishing that we had just listened to the advisor that we brought in to tell us to take more space because we should have taken more space. We were, we were full pretty quick after we made that decision. Um, so when you, when you think about those reasons to expand, what is it about why you'd want to expand? And the, the simple ones are easy. Um, the, the store is consistently crowded and customers are complaining about a lack of space. 
that's something that not only can you feel, but you can see it becomes a customer service issue at that point. Shoppers can't shop because they're trying to shop in the middle of where you've put your play space in and now you've built a successful business. So your play space is full. So the evening time when you're hosting events, you have people in those chairs and, and in those tables playing at events. And then you also have shoppers trying to shop around the periphery of it and they're busy because it's in the evening time. So, you know, the business is sort of built from a, from the standpoint of a, like a 4 p.m. to a, a 10 p.m. style business. And if everything converges and everything's successful and you, 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 you are doing all the things the right way, it can be an uncomfortable experience for both of them. Number one, the, the tournament player has to deal with somebody who's moving their bags or moving their chairs and stuff like that and trying to shimmy around to, to get to the product. And then some buyers just will not go back into a space that's, that's filled with people playing games because it's just not comfortable to shop in. So that's certainly a reason. Uh, you've seen a steady, a steady increase in sales and foot traffic that suggests that demand is outstripping your supply. If you're looking at really high turn rates on your inventory, that is something where your inventory just cannot keep up with the speed of the sales that are happening. Even if it's just certain product lines, that's certainly a reason why you should look at maybe it's a, it's a good time to expand. The other thing is maybe you're only carrying core product and the core product is selling really well, but you're, part of that is that you're sort of sandwiched into this idea of my walls and my slat wall and my displays can only take so much product. So I'm carrying core product and I'm carrying maybe band number one outside of that core product, but I'm not really carrying the full line. So am I leaving a bunch of sales on the table because I can only put this much of it in? Or maybe you've just made the decision that I'm only gonna carry one line. I'd like to carry two or three other lines, but I just don't have the space. So I'm gonna focus really hard on this one thing. But I know if I carried line two and line three, I would probably pick up from some sales from that. And especially if it's something that's like a neck, another miniature line or another role-playing line or another CCG or something like that, where you have people that are kind of coming and going from your primary line that if you had the ability to be able to move them into a secondary or tertiary line, you'd have a much better success being able to keep them in the store, generally speaking. Uh, it's crucial to understand that expansion isn't just about having more space. It's about enhancing the customer experience and creating new revenue opportunities. So when I was talking about sort of the store layout and the space you have and how you've positioned your stock and what you've done with your play space and whether or not you even have a play space is another decision and a reason why you would expand. So, okay, product selling really well. You've got a bunch of expandable product that's doing well, but you don't have the, the the amount of tables and chairs that you would wanna have in order to be able to get to the next level for whatever that revenue tier is that you're looking to get to. So sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a play space thing too, or you started the store and you didn't realize how fundamental play space was, and now you've got a couple of hodgepodge tables and chairs together, but those things are blowing up and you need more space that way. That's also another reason. So think about the reasons why you're considering expansion. Is it because you want to offer more for your community or is it because you're feeling pressure by your current limitations and what's going on in the store? Whether it's a space wise, is it product wise, is it tables and chairs wise, is it staffing? Staffing can be another thing too. If you have so many people that are at your register at the same time and you don't have the ability to put in and install another register, you it doesn't matter if you have five employees behind the register to deal with the traffic there's only one register so occasionally it's times where you can just you you need you need another register you need another area to, to conduct business because people are not going to wait in line that's going to be one of the things that turns them off and makes them go online too you know if they if they come into your store and they have to wait in the lines four or five deep our customers tend to be a little bit more forgiving than somebody maybe at a starbucks but at the same time, they don't want to have to wait in line. And if you can add an extra register in and you just don't have the space to be able to do that, there's a, an immense value to being able to add. If you go from one register to two registers, there are just times of the day when it's just going to be fantastic for you. And when that register is not open or it's a slow day or you don't want to have it up, that's okay. But having a second register is is critical to increasing your your um, customer service and the ability to be able to generate more revenue as, as people are coming to the store. So... I'm gonna talk about some key indicators for expansions and, and I'll sort of touch on some of the stuff that I had mentioned before, you know, along with that play space and stuff. There's There's been other people that have decided that they wanted to go into a cafe. There's a lot that goes into that. If you're gonna do a full kitchen and you need to do a hood and you need to do, you know, if you're gonna do alcohol and you're gonna do taps and stuff, you need a completely different setups to be able to do that if that's the direction you're gonna go in. So I'm gonna talk about space limitations. Our customers are staff bumping in each other. Are your game tables always full or is your merchandise crammed in every nook and cranny? I've been in stores where it's very clear that the 1800 or 2400 square feet wasn't enough like two years ago. They've got one of two problems typically when I'm in and I'm looking around. A, they don't have enough space in it because it's just so maxed out that nobody can shop in it without something falling. 
and B, they probably have to run a sale. If I look around a lot of times, there's some dead inventory there and I know what dead inventory looks like. I know what high turn inventory is and I know what dead inventory looks like. So I think a lot of us can look around our stores and see sections of our store that probably should have gone, you know, six months ago and we should, probably should have replaced it with something else instead, but we just don't either have the time to do that, have the mindset to do that, know what we're gonna fill that space with. Sometimes the answer is not to fill the space. Sometimes it's just to spread everything else out. Because if you've got a bunch of things crammed in because you're like, okay, I'm gonna fit $90,000 worth of product in this space that really could only hold $40,000 worth of product and it's all in there and it's gonna be good. It's, it's actually a terrible shopping experience. Like spread your stuff out a little bit, give yourself some more room. You can only sell what you have, but at the same time, there's a certain amount of presentation and there's a certain amount of appearance that a shopper is generally looking to seek to be comfortable in a space. So space limitations is a super big reason why you definitely want to expand or you want to look at expansion. When we expanded, when we combined the two stores together and we moved into the new location, when we added in the play space, the play space made our space was about 30% larger than what it had been when I was just Millennium and he was just Cyberstorm. When the new landlord came in and bought the plaza, that space that I was talking about that was in between the two of us, the speaker store, they didn't want to renew their lease. It was an older guy. He fixed speakers for a living. He'd been there for like 35 years. He was just done. So what we did was the landlord came to us and said, hey, before we put this on the market, would you like to gobble up that space? And at the time, we didn't have offices. We didn't have the ability to do a bunch of things. So there was a, there was a, you know, another 4,000 square foot of space that we were, that we were offered there. Now it was going to be a bunch of work. We had to tear down some walls. We had to rearrange some bathrooms. We had to change some some of the lighting in it. We had to deal with some HVAC issues and things like that. But what it allowed us to do is we now had a back end area that we didn't have before. We were just kind of crunched up against this wall. So what it did was it actually allowed us an area to process our online cards. It allowed us to do a bunch of sorting stuff that we couldn't do before. It gave us the first attempt that we had at a private game space as well. And then I had an office, which we didn't have an office before. So there was no way to escape. We couldn't get business. We couldn't get work done. The office that my business partner had was, was literally a broom closet from before. And like him and I couldn't have fit in there if we wanted to. So the new space, we gobbled up that space. We looked at what the cost was going to be. It allowed us the ability to have a, have a larger online presence when it came to TCG player and a couple of other things. And allowed us to basically build out an online store that we didn't have the space to be able to do that for. Now, the online store ended up being a lot more successful than the singular private play space. So what we ended up doing was we closed the doors of the private play space and we put all of our online stuff in there. We sort of used that as additional warehousing space, which is what we needed as we sort of grew into that as well. Um, consistent sales growth is another reason why you would consider moving into a new location or to look at expanding your current location. If you're seeing a steady increase in sales over several quarters of each year, then it may be time that you take a look at what the space is and what other spaces are available. If your store is consistently bringing higher revenue, it might be time to think about scaling up. Remember consistency is key here. One or two, I'm not talking about one or two good months. I'm talking about you collectively look at 12 months of sales over the course of three to five years and you're seeing this net increase that's happening um, with, with regularity and you're seeing the growth happen in your, in your event space if you have events you're seeing your key product lines, there's growth in those areas as well. We saw 12 years of consistent growth. We've never had a year that we've, I've never owned the business and we've never had at least 10% growth in gross revenue every single year. Um, this last year we were 30% growth when we moved to the new location. This year we're on track for another 25% growth in the new location. So like moving to this new big location was terrifying. Um, but in the end was the was the right decision. Uh, community demand is another reason why you would think about expanding, whether it's they're asking you for more lines of product that you can't fit on your shelf, or they're asking you to host um, other events that you have to turn down because you only have so much space for the events that you're running now. Whether you wanna run other events, whether you wanna bring in other product lines, that sort of thing, community demand will do that. And the other thing that you wanna consider that's really important is financial stability. You wanna make sure that you've got a nice war chest on the back end. You wanna to talk to whoever your financial institution is and decide if you if if you decided to go into something, can you handle what the build out is? Whoever the new landlord is, you need to be able to talk to them and find out how much they'll participate on the build out versus what you're required to participate on the build out. And that's some discovery stuff when you get into leasing and actually looking at an additional space, which that could be another episode. I don't love that process. It's miserable, um, but I might be able to do 30 minutes on it. So at some point, I mean, go in the comments. If you, want to, if you want to talk about, if you want me to talk about how we decided to land on this space or other particular spaces, I'm happy to, I'm happy to do an episode on that. For us, COVID um, was a blessing and a curse at the same time. 
we got shut down for 52 days. It was absolutely miserable. $40,000 worth of Lego landed on our dock two days after we couldn't open. So that was a bit terrifying because that bill was going to come due in 30 days and we had no ability to be able to sell those products. Our events were shut down and nobody knew what was going to happen. When we were allowed to open back up and the state put in the guidelines and stuff, it changed a lot of things. But what happened was it brought a whole ton of people into our space. Now we couldn't use our play space anymore, which sucked. If we could have events during that period of time, and it, it, given the fact that every other place was um, was not being able to run events, if we were the only place in town to run events, our events would have been hopping then too. So we certainly lost a, a, a major chunk of revenue because our event space wasn't open during that time, but we certainly had a whole ton of customers that, that sort of came in and discovered us because there weren't other entertainment venues out there, and that's all we're selling is box entertainment. Between the earned income credit, the PPP loans that happened, the different things that we took advantage of during that time, the increased sales, we were managed, we were able to sort of adjust to sort of what the new normal was going to be, uh, bring in a whole bunch of new staff, deal with some operational stuff. So we brought in a bunch more card sorters and things like that. So we scaled ourselves up during that period of time. But we put a bunch of that money away too with the idea of we don't need this operating capital right now. Let's save it, let's invest it, let's figure out what we're gonna do. And if we get to the point where we decide we're gonna make a move, we've got that available to be able to do that without any kind of real financial fear. The other thing you wanna take a look at is, is, is do a competitor analysis. Look at your area, take a look around. What are other stores doing? Are there, uh, how far away is your closest competitor? When you, when you think about competitors, are you, are you thinking about all your competitors or are you just thinking about competitors that just sell the same stuff as you? You may not realize it, but a video game store or a comic book store in town can still be competition for you because it's, it's entertainment dollar competition that you're doing. So they're discretionary income outlets. So make sure you factor those in when you're sort of looking at it. Now there's, there can be some homeostasis between those businesses if you're in the area because it makes it sort of a one-stop area for people to go and get their nerd done. If you don't want to carry comics and you don't want to carry video games, sort of being in the same general areas can certainly be a boon for each of you if you have a good relationship with them. But do some sort of a competitor analysis. Take a look at what they're running for events. Take a look at what they're carrying for products. Take a look at what there is for opportunities, that sort of stuff. You don't have to deep dive. It's hard to find information on what their sales are. And most store owners aren't going to be forthright with what they're doing for revenue, especially if they're successful. Uh, so just make sure you take a look at the area that you're in, take an area, a look at the area that you're moving into. It, that feels like a no brainer, but a lot of times people are just like, ah, oh, this is a great space that's available. And it's like, okay, well, but you're right next door to this other place. The, the one that I, uh, on this list that I probably discounted the, the most was personal readiness. Um, I am always ready for a challenge. I'm always ready to do the next thing. I announced a couple of weeks ago that I was taking over the operations management for the Game Center, which used to be the Fantasy Flight Game Center. Last week I announced on my Facebook page that I was taking over and doing operations management there. Now what that means is that there's no affiliation between Millennium and the Game Center. There's no ownership change. There's no adjustment there. It's just that I was brought in to run, basically run the business from a sort of a CEO tactical standpoint where uh, to go in, sort of take a look at what the business is, make adjustments as I see fit, deal with the, the um, product levels that are there, the staffing, that sort of stuff. So that was a, an interesting challenge to decide to take on. And it was sort of a, I wanted to see if I could prove my worth on that. Like this has been great for me. Moving into this space has been a fit, a fantastic challenge and it's been successful. I've had a whole ton of people that have been really, really critical this entire way. Um, so that opportunity is kind of a nice way to, for me to sort of get out on my own and see what I can do in that space. But for here, I thought I was personally ready for it. I didn't realize what needed to happen as far as building the team, the organizational structure changes that were going to need to happen here, how many staff I was going to need to be able to run and facilitate the store, changing it into an organizational chart, which we never had before, having different departments because the space was big enough where we wanted to have different departments, but we didn't really give a long-term thought about how much staff needed to be in each of those areas. So we moved in to this space with half the staff that we currently have and trying to run the space and with half the people that we have now was a nightmare. I lost sort of a critical staff member during that process. And then shortly thereafter, I, I, I lost another one, but we were fortunate enough to kind of be able to replace them with people that were as good or more competent in those roles, which has sort of just kept the thing going, um, thankfully, because that doesn't always happen that way. But I didn't think about how many systems and how much of a change it was gonna be having registers in three different areas of the store. 
um, having online sales be the way that it was, the, the communication breakdowns that were going to happen because I wasn't an arm's length away from everybody. I was now in the back of the store with spreadsheets and all the stuff that I look at that's fun for me every day. And they were in the front of the store, so I couldn't hear customer interaction to be able to do the corrections on the fly that I would do before in the past. So I sort of had to rely on managers to do that. So there was a whole lot of stuff that happened during that transition that I hadn't planned for because I just thought we'd move in and we'd be in a bigger space and we'd sort of stretch out and everybody would have more room. Well, the reality of it was that I needed a lot more staff to do the things that I'm doing now and I wouldn't have been able to do it with the other staff because they were just drowned. At the same time, I didn't want to hire on a bunch of people before we moved with the idea of if we're successful, I'm going to have these people and this is going to be great. But on the other side of it is I didn't want to be disingenuous to those new hires either and bring on a bunch of staff and say, oh, shit, I'm sorry. Like we are not going to be able to keep you on because the business is not thriving, right? So erring on the side of caution when it comes to that kind of stuff, I didn't staff up as quick as I should have initially. And it was something that took us a little while. Now, shifts went really fast back then because there was not a lot of people there and it, there was a ton of customers and stuff. So your shift went really fast because you were doing a lot of you were doing a lot of sales, but it, it wasn't operationally set up. And we're still still today. We're juggling that. Right. We, we've got a new after Labor Day. We've got a brand new schedule that's going to be released and people's schedules are changing and shifting around. We've got personnel that are going in different spots and things like that. That's something just like inventory personnel and staffing is something that we fine tune and we kind of do on the fly all the time. And we use our best guess to kind of get to those metrics. But, you know, occasionally the best thing to do on a slow day is to add another staff member. It sounds crazy, but occasionally that is that is what you need to do. So let's go into uh, benefits and challenges of expansion really quick. So benefits of expansion, and, and these are all things that I've, that I've seen personally for us as we moved into this space, is increased revenue potential. Yep, we moved from you know, 11,000 square feet to 28,000 square feet. Now we added a bunch of inventory. We spaced it out. We merchandised it better. We had a bunch of different sales opportunities. We had um, demo tables and feature tables, and we're allowed to do seasonal displays that we couldn't really do at a scale that we're doing here. We started carrying a bunch more manga and Gundam, and we brought in 40 Gashapon machines, and we leaned into more dice and more miniatures and more, kind of more of everything. Um, more of everything doesn't guarantee success. Like, you still have to be able to curate what that everything is and be able to make it so that it's something that's desirable for your customers. Otherwise, you're going to put yourself in, in, in a bad spot. But increased revenue potential is certainly a benefit. Uh, the second one would be enhanced customer experience. Customers that walk in now and look at the space, it's one of the nicest looking game stores in the country. Mox Boarding House has a beautiful layout and they have beautiful signage and stuff like that. They're sort of um, a litmus for me as far as looking at what the quality is and what the quality can be. Uh, so I look at sort of their displays and I look at other retail outlets and try to mimic the stuff that they do really well. So when people walk in, it's impressive. The displays are clean, the product's well laid out. Our signage is improving. It's still not to where I want it to be, but hopefully we'll get, you know, our exterior signs will get put up soon and we'll have some more interior signs that'll give you a better idea on how to get around the store. We have seven registers now as opposed to sort of two and a half that we had before. So the time for transactions has, has gone down significantly because people have a lot more options on where they can actually check out. Uh, the other thing is market presence. We moved into the space with the largest game store in the world. Country. Maybe the world. Perhaps the solar system. I don't know. We're real big now. And when people walk in, they know we're real big. And they walk in and they're like, this place is really big. So market presence is super important. Um, we were sort of the biggest in town before. And now we're double and a half the biggest from what we were before. So we're sort of creating this giant Death Star where like these other planets can come into the area, but we're going to put a bunch of pressure on you if you do. Um, so market presence was super important for us as well. It's one of those things that you want to look at too if you're, um, if you're changing from one suburb to another, if you're moving from a rural area to a suburban area, or you're moving from an industrial to, you know, sort of more of a... Um, a business centric area where there's a bunch more dining and that sort of thing. It's something that you definitely want to consider. What's your market presence look like? You don't want to put a B level store in a AAA downtown area because if the rest of the stores blow the doors off of what you're able to do, you're going to look like, you know, the ugly kid. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that your stuff is up to snuff with the neighbors that you have around you to make sure that your displays are going to look that good. Your professionalism is going to be there because if you don't line up with the rest of the stores that are there, your market presence is going to be garbage. Uh, so challenges, and there are many. Uh, higher costs, of course. We move into a space that's two and a half times the size of what it was before. Rent goes up. It doesn't go up just because there's more square footage. It, it goes up because we're in a we're in a bigger and better plaza. 
um, our advertising costs, our cam charges, uh, all of that stuff increases because we're just in a better location in general. Now with that is more traffic, we've got a stoplight, we've got all these other things that come with it. There's a bunch of neighboring businesses that actually better align with what we're doing. So higher costs, staff costs more, inventory costs more, fixtures cost more, there's an initial cost to those fixtures, and then the continued gardening of those fixtures too. So we put, I don't know, six figures worth of, of new displays in the store, and then we've probably added another I don't know, almost half of that in other fixtures now that we've been in the space and we've stretched out a little bit and figured out what our what our needs are in terms of merchandising. So that that was part of the higher cost. Obviously your 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 fixed stuff, your heat and electric and your air and internet and all of the supply costs of register tape and that sort of stuff, all of that stuff goes up. There's operational complexity and I talked about some of that, depending on what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it, it's not just that you're gonna do more of it, it's that there's certain systems that need to be in place when you make that transition that aren't in place from the location that you're in before if you're in a bigger space because you're probably going to need more staff, You know, whether it's Connect Team or Home Base or one of these apps where people can talk to each other during their day-to-day -to, -day to make sure that communication's going on or walkie-talkies or something like that. There's a lot more complexity to it when you when you move into a bigger space, depending on how dramatic that space is. Now, if you're moving from an 1,800 square foot store to a 3,500 square foot store, or you're moving, you know, it's just a couple of thousand feet different, maybe you're not gonna run into the same operational complexity that I'm talking about. But if you make a big move and you have to bring in more staff and you have other areas that you're facilitating for the store and things like that, that stuff can, can really bog you down and it can be something that isn't necessarily the most obvious stuff. Financial risk, obviously we signed a new lease with a, with a massive amount of rent and a bunch of obligations and all these staff here count on us to be able to make sure that the business continues to grow and the customers count on us to make sure that we continue to pay our bills to stock products that they want. So there's a, there's a massive financial risk or there can be a massive financial risk depending on what the next step is for you when you take a look at what your fixed costs are and your operational costs and how you break those things down, that stuff gets to be, it adds up over time. So really take a look at, at what you're doing. When we moved here outside of understanding exactly how much staff, I felt comfortable that if we had the same sales that we had in the old space and the new space, given the increase in all that stuff, and this is how we were do. this is when I talk about financial stability. We were doing so well in that space that moving into this space, I felt like if we had no growth at all, as long as we didn't take any back steps, we would have been perfectly fine in this space based on those bills. And that's a comfortable place to make that sort of a decision and that sort of judgment. Okay, I'm gonna jump into this this new space, but I'm not as concerned about it because if I can just do what I did in the old space, things will be fine. Uh, market saturation is another thing to consider as far as a challenge goes. Whether you're a new store, or your store moving into a new location, or you're doing something like that, you gotta take a look around you, take a look at your peers, how many people are in your metro area, What's the median income for that area? How many stores are there? How many people are running Friday Night Magic? What's the commander scene look like? How many people have One Piece? How many people are running Games Workshop? Like you have to take a look around that stuff because market saturation can kill you just as much. So what I would say in those cases, if you're moving into a new location or you're taking a look at that, you know, it's the same thing that I'm doing in this new, this new location that I'm managing now. It's sort of doing a SWOT analysis and taking a look at the exterior people that I look at as competition. And I make sure that my event calendar kind of counter programs their calendars in that I'm not running on top of them right now. If we build up that community and we get bigger and bigger, then maybe we'll run on top of them. But for right now, I'm dodging all of that stuff. For here, it's different. For here, we're the pace. We are the pace car here. So we just set up however we want and then the rest of the stores can either adjust to us or not. So it's two different environments that I'm sort of managing there. And really quickly, steps to take before expanding. Obviously, you wanna conduct a market analysis. You wanna create a detailed business plan. So have as much of those unknowns as you possibly can out in front of you. You wanna make sure that you secure financing. We didn't have an issue with that. Other places will have an issue with that. When we went to the bank and we said we needed money, they were like, how about if we give you two and a half times what you want? I said, no, I don't want that. I'm not taking on all of that financial responsibility. I just need this much. And they're like, well, why don't we give you this giant bucket and just take to what you need and then we'll finance there. And I said, okay, we'll do that. So that's sort of what we did. They gave us the opportunity for a ton of money because they can see what our financials are and then kind of go from there. And that's what we ended up doing. When we got to the point where we're like, okay, build out is over. We just turned that into a loan instead of revolving credit and we moved on. Engage your community. Make sure the community knows that you're moving. Give them as much heads up as possible. We still have a giant sign. Well, our lease isn't over in our old space, but that's a whole different, different story. There's a giant sign there that just has a huge, massive QR code you could scan from the side of the road that gives you a, a, a clip to come to our new location. 
make sure that you let them know. Make sure your Google and your Facebook and all of your other things are updated in that way. And then the other thing too is you want to evaluate your team. When you're moving into a new space and you've got new people and you've got new responsibilities and new issues and stuff, you want to make sure that you have the human assets in place to be able to pull off what you're looking to do. We juggled a bunch of that. I have a strong, strong team, one of the best teams in the world when it comes to game retail. Uh, if I didn't, we wouldn't be able to run as optimized as what we are. We still make mistakes. We still have some issues and things like that. But I would put my team of uh, retail staff and, and overall staff at this store up against literally anybody in the in the world when it comes to retailing games in the industry, and, and I think we would crush them. If you don't have a staff that you feel that comfortable, confident with, and you can't look at all the different pieces that you have, then you have to look at, before you make that move, who are you going to go out, how are you going to recruit people to bring into your organization that can affect the change that you need to to be able to make that, that leap and that growth. So if it's something where you're like, I want to move into this space because I want to expand into miniatures and you don't have anybody with any knowledge outside of Games Workshop, you better bring somebody in that has some knowledge on how to sell that stuff or the likelihood of it just selling because you threw it on the wall is really, really low. So have somebody with a level of expertise that can do it at least in, at least to the expertise level that all of your other lines are managed at too when you do that expansion. So it can be wonderful. Expansion can be wonderful. It can be, it can be absolutely stressful. It's certainly the only way that I can think of in the industry to level up other than other than jumping into multiple locations. So like a lunatic, I leveled up by going into this space and now I'm, I'm dealing with another location as well, uh, which is fun and exciting. And it's it's nice to get into something that's a bit of a mess and try to be there to, 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 to clean it up. Feel free to post any questions that you have about expansion. Obviously, I'll do an AMA at the end of this thing for about 24-ish minutes give or take today. Uh, as far as topics go for next week, I'm not sure yet. So if there's a topic you want to hear about, I, I love it when you just put something in the comments for it and make it really easy for me. Other than that, we'll see you next week and happy gaming. Thanks.